Most people don't realize how important their credit score is until they actually need it. And as we'll learn today, building a solid credit score can take a lot of time and patience. So it's important to start now, even if you don't need to borrow money in the near future. Now, thankfully, you can build a credit score in the high 700s for absolutely free in a relatively short period of time, and that's gonna save you a lot of money when you do go to apply for a loan in the future. So let's break down the credit score system and take a look at some ways that you can start building excellent credit starting immediately. Let's jump right into it. What is going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe if you wanna be one of my first subscribers. Now, obviously I'm very new at this, but I'm learning and I'm enjoying the process and I hope you're liking the content so far. So building a good credit score may not seem necessary to you right now, especially if you're in your late teens or even if you're in your early 20s, but building a good credit score does take time. So it's important that you start now so that you don't go to apply for your dream apartment in a few years and get denied because of bad credit, even though you aren't actually trying to borrow money. Now, if you aren't familiar, your credit is essentially a report card on how well you handle the money that is being lent to you. And lenders use it to determine not only if you're gonna be approved, but they also use it to determine your interest rates, which can vary drastically depending on your credit score. So the first and most important measure used to calculate your credit score is your on-time payment history, which accounts for 35% of your overall score. Now, obviously paying your credit card off or any loan off on time is crucial if you want to avoid paying ridiculous interest rates and late fees, but it's also necessary if you want to build a healthy credit score. So credit bureaus and lenders view your payment history as a percentage, and they calculate this by taking your number of on-time payments divided by the total number of payments that were due. For example, let's say you had one credit card for three years, meaning that you had 36 total payment periods, and let's say you paid 35 out of those 36 payments on time. This means that you would have an on-time payment percentage of 97.2%. Now you may be thinking that 97% is fantastic, but you would be wrong. Actually, according to Credit Karma and really any credit tool, a payment history of 97% puts you in the red category and is extremely bad for your credit score. It may seem ridiculous that missing just one payment over three years damages your credit this much, but like I said, your payment history does account for 35% of your overall score, so it is extremely important that you pay everything off on time. The good news is that as your total number of payments goes up, each missed payment has a much smaller effect on your overall credit score. For example, let's say instead of just having one credit card for three years, that you had five credit cards over that same period of time. That would be a total number of payments of 180, and if you had missed just one of those payments, like in the previous example, then your on-time payment percentage would instead be 99.4%, which puts you in the green category and is really great for your credit. This is a great example of why it's so important to have, one, a long credit history and also multiple accounts, since it will decrease the impact that one missed payment will have on your credit score. That being said, you should obviously always strive to pay off your card in full every single month. At the very least, if you get yourself in a bit of a jam and you can't afford to pay off the full balance for whatever reason, then first of all, you should probably cut up that credit card since you obviously don't know how to use it properly. But just making the minimum payment will count as an on-time payment and therefore won't affect your credit score. So go ahead and make that on-time payment at the very least. But I'll say it again, you should never ever carry a balance on a credit card for any reason, ever. If you know that you're not gonna be able to pay off that card at the end of the month, then you shouldn't be buying whatever it is that you're buying that you clearly can't afford. The second most important measure used to calculate your credit score is your credit utilization, which accounts for 30% of your overall score. Now this is one of the most commonly overlooked factors that a lot of people don't even know about. Your credit utilization is essentially a measure of how much of your available credit are you actually using on a regular basis. So let's say that you had a $5,000 credit limit and you spent $3,000 of that 5,000. 3,000 is 60% of 5,000, meaning that your utilization rate is 60%. Again, some of you may think that this isn't that bad, but a utilization rate of 60% is absolutely horrible and will put you well into the red category. In fact, it's recommended that you keep your utilization below 5% in order to have a healthy credit utilization rate. 
Now, this doesn't mean that you can only use 5% of your credit limit because as long as you pay off the full balance before your statement arrives, then your utilization rate will actually remain at 0%, which is best for your credit. For example, when I got my first credit card, my main source of income was flipping laptops. So every month I would max out my credit card by buying two or three MacBooks on it, but I would sell those computers for a profit before my payment was even due, and then immediately use that revenue to pay off the card. Therefore, my utilization rate actually remained at 0%, even though I was maxing out the cards and putting lots of money on them. This also meant that I was able to rake in hundreds of dollars in cash back by using the cards for such large purchases. When I say I maxed out my credit cards, this does not mean that I had a utilization rate of 100% because I was paying it off before the statement arrived at the end of every month and therefore my utilization remained at 0%. I also think it's important to mention that you do not need to carry a balance on your card in order to increase your credit score. For some reason, someone a long time ago started this ridiculous rumor that you needed to carry a balance in your card at all times in order to keep the credit card companies happy but I promise you this is 100% a myth and carrying a balance on your credit card is one of the worst things you can do since credit cards have some of the highest interest rates you can possibly find. Just pay off your card at the end of every single month and make sure you're making all other payments on time and you'll keep your utilization low and therefore increase your credit score. So your on-time payment history and your credit utilization do account for 65% of your overall score. So they're obviously very important, but there are several other factors that you definitely want to keep track of. The next largest factor is the length of your overall credit history, which accounts for 15% of your credit score. Now, I briefly mentioned this earlier in the video, but the length or age of your credit history is extremely important if you want to have a good credit score. And that's why it's so important to start immediately if you haven't yet applied for any line of credit. Starting your credit history now means that in a few years when you do need to apply for a loan, not only will you get approved, but you'll also ensure that you're getting the lowest interest rate possible. If you're 18 or older and don't yet have a credit card, I highly encourage you to go apply for the Discover It cashback card since it is a great starter card that you're almost guaranteed to get approved for. If you do want to apply for this card, it's a fantastic place to start if you have no credit history. And if you click the link in the description, you'll get a free $50 when you're approved. Most credit bureaus actually want a credit history of nine years, but personally, I think this is absolutely ridiculous and unnecessary, unless you're going for some astronomical 850 credit score, which is nearly impossible. With a credit history of just a year or two, you'll be able to establish a score in the high 700s that will guarantee you the lowest interest rates as long as you follow the other steps that we talked about on this list. Now, a lot of times people do get confused by this and don't quite understand how your credit history is calculated, but it's important to mention that it is an average length of your credit history, not the total length. This means that if you opened one credit card five years ago, but have opened multiple lines of credit since then, then your credit history is not five years. It would be an average of all of the lines of credit that you have open. So if you had one credit card for five years, then yes, your average credit history technically would be five years. But if you now decided to open another credit card, then your credit history would be cut in half since it is an average of all of your lines of credit. Now this doesn't mean that you should be afraid to go open a new line of credit, since having multiple lines of credit can be extremely beneficial to your overall credit score. I just wanted to make you aware that this is an average of your credit history, not just a measure of your oldest account open. However, this is why it is extremely important to keep those old accounts open, since closing an old line of credit means that you could drastically reduce the average length of your credit history. Obviously, there isn't much you can do to improve your credit age other than being patient and waiting for your scores to slowly improve. Banks love to loan money to people who don't really need it, and they're very hesitant to loan money to people who actually do need it. I know this seems very backwards, but what I'm saying is that slowly building your credit score when you don't actually need it will ensure that when it comes time for you to actually apply for a loan, you'll be able to get the loan that you need at the lowest possible interest rate. This brings me to the fourth measure of calculating your credit score, and that is the number of credit lines that you have open or available to you. Now, I briefly talked about this earlier, but the number of credit lines really enhances the factors that we already discussed in this video. For example, by having more lines of credit, you'll also increase your utilization rate since the total amount of credit available to you will be greater. If you only have one line of credit that's say $1,000, then the total credit available to you is $1,000. Meaning that if you spend $100 on that, that means that you have a utilization rate of 10%, which like we said earlier, is not very good. 
However, if you had five cards that each had a $1,000 limit, then the total credit available to you would be $5,000, meaning that if you spent $100, that would be a utilization rate of only 2% which will easily put you in the green category and will be great for your credit score. Having multiple accounts opens also means that you have more opportunities to make on-time payments. And as we saw earlier, on-time payments is the most important factor when calculating your credit score. So by having two or three lines of credit open, you can double or triple the amount of on-time payments that you're able to make and increase your credit score at a rapid pace. Now, I'm not saying that you should go open five credit cards right now because that is an absolutely horrible idea. But if you've had one credit card for a year and you've been making on-time payments consistently, then maybe you should consider opening a new card. Now, this will temporarily reduce your credit score since it will reduce the average length of your credit history. But the many benefits of having multiple lines of credit will greatly outweigh this small dip in your credit score in the long term. Also, make sure you keep in mind that a line of credit is not just a credit card. It can be any kind of loan, including student loans, auto loans, a mortgage, or really any kind of personal or business loan. So the fifth and final factor used to calculate your credit score is the total number of hard inquiries. So if you aren't familiar with this term, a hard inquiry is essentially a marking that shows up on your credit report when you apply for a new line of credit. For example, if you open a new credit card or apply for a car loan, then this will temporarily show up on your credit report as a hard inquiry. This measure is used to show lenders if you are in a high short-term need of money. If lenders see that you recently applied for five credit cards and an auto loan, then these hard inquiries will appear on your credit score and will probably raise a lot of red flags to the lender since it's not exactly normal to go apply for that many lines of credit at once. Now, it's nearly impossible to avoid hard inquiries completely, but it's important that you spread them out over a long period of time and you're very selective with what lines of credit you're taking on. The good news is that these hard inquiries only show up on your credit report for two years and only affect your credit score for one year. So they're a temporary dip that will not affect the long-term health of your credit score and credit report. It's also important to note that multiple inquiries within a similar category will often get grouped together. So say you're shopping around for a mortgage and looking for the best rate, then going to five different lenders will not necessarily show up five different times as five hard inquiries. And the credit bureaus will know that these are similar and will group them together. This is great since it encourages borrowers to shop around for the best rates without punishing them through these hard inquiries. So those are the five factors that are used to calculate your credit score. And by keeping track of them and being patient, you can build a credit score in the high 700s in as little as one to two years. I highly recommend that you keep track of your credit score using one of the many online services like Credit Karma or Credit Sesame. Now these are not sponsored and they're not affiliated with me in any way, but they're great platforms that are free and will help you keep track of your credit score and also give you suggestions on what credit card might be best for you. Like most financial practices, it's most important that you stay consistent and patient. And really, once you get a credit score past 760, you'll be considered an excellent borrower by most lenders, and anything beyond that is really just showing off. So there's the fastest way to build your credit quickly, whether you have no credit at all, or maybe you're trying to repair old and damaged credit. It's completely possible to build an excellent credit score without drowning yourself in stupid amounts of debt. If you're building credit by taking on unnecessary debt, then you're definitely doing something wrong. By just having two or three free credit cards, you can build a credit score in the high 700s that will guarantee you a much lower interest rate when you do need a more substantial loan in your future. If you have any questions at all, as always, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below and I will be sure to get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button and of course, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Thank you so much for your time and checking out my channel. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.